Well, good afternoon, everyone. So good to have you all here. I hope you are enjoying your day. <clears throat> Just uh, to let you know, I am on call for the ambulance in Macville, so I may have to end this quickly if I need to take off. Uh, I always like to warn you that I'm not just disappearing, but uh, that there's a, a reason behind it. So a couple things for you. If you've been on our Facebook page, you probably have uh, noticed uh, the announcement that we put up there. Um, the, the councils met on Tuesday night um, and with some guidance that uh, came out of the Synod, uh, we have uh, chosen uh, at this time to uh, resume on-site worship. Uh, so our sanctuaries will be open once again for us to join uh, together. Um, we will start that uh, Sunday the 17th. Um, and so normal worship schedule will be uh, 9 o'clock out at Ottawa and 11 o'clock at Sundall. And all, all of you should know that just because we can return to worship does not mean that we have to return to worship. Um, being in worship is just uh, one option for you to be a part of this ministry. Um, if you're not comfortable coming to the sanctuary, you don't have to come. Um, obviously, if you're feeling sick or you have, uh, haven't have been around somebody that's sick or um, have been sick yourself, we ask that you continue to worship at home uh, through our online ministry. Uh, and there are some things that we're going to do just a little bit different in our worship services. Um, we're going to have to have some of this, what we call social distancing. Um, so families will, are more than welcome to sit together, um, and the rest of us will kind of uh, move ourselves apart from each other with the, you know, sitting every other pew, um, those sorts of things. Um other things like our offering and the bulletins and, and things like that, um, there'll be a little different change to how we do some of that. Um, there won't be any more hymnals in the pews, uh, at least not for a little while. Uh, we'll have everything in our bulletins with the, the music and the scripture and, the, and our forgivenesses, our prayers, all of that, uh, like we did before. We will have hand sanitizer placed throughout the church. I invite you to use that. Also invite you to uh, wash your hands thoroughly um, as, as we have. Uh, the topic of face masks, um, they are a personal preference. We encourage you to wear them uh, if you are so inclined to do so. So as we move through this, this time of transition, we need to remember that uh, together we're the church that we are God's chosen and we will navigate this. We will get through this. We will have this new normal for a while. Um, and as we start to see where things go within our state, our county, um, things like that, uh, some of these things will change over time. So I just wanted to let you all know uh, where we were at with that. Um, if you that uh, essentially I just told you everything that the Facebook post has but it's always nice to to reach out to those that don't have Facebook that may see this uh, through our YouTube channel um, uh, so that they are aware that starting on the 17th we will be here um, the 24th is graduation uh, Sunday and it is uh, a chance for us to honor our graduates um, Janice will be reaching out to them and so we'll have a special time uh, for them uh, during our service uh, here in the sanctuary and as always our online ministry will continue um, I know a lot of you have come to me and 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 said how much this truly means to you I've done some thinking and um, how we're going to structure our weekly uh, time together um, is we will, um, not, not this week, um, uh, but, uh, we will, we'll stop, uh, our Saturday time together once we resume worship. Uh, so we have a, a couple more Saturdays together. Um, 
but once we resume our in-person worship, we will stop our Saturday time together. But Monday through Friday, uh, we will continue to be together. Um, some of that may be just uh, something that is recorded and uh, I will post online at the same time. So our time together at one o'clock will either be in person uh, like this, uh, and I would say the majority of the time will be that way. Uh, but there will be times uh, where it might just be a, a recorded message from myself or another member of the congregation that wants to just give a devotion time to you. Um, uh, I will be taking some time uh, uh, off uh, in, the, in the next couple weeks here, and, and so you might get some of those recorded messages during that time. But just so that you are all aware, um, I, I prayed about it, uh, I've read comments, I've, I've gotten messages, um, and it is an outreach ministry that we will continue here at Sundall in Ottawa. Um, truly the only change is that we won't have it on Saturdays. So with all of that being said, now let's get to the heart of why we come together. I found a passage uh, out of Isaiah that I wanted to talk a little bit about. Isaiah 25, verse 1. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. I think this, this verse... Well, there are many things which we can praise God for. One of the most significant is his faithfulness to us and his faithfulness to what his plan is for us. And while many of us, I think, do have dreams that are big and grand, it is only God that can accomplish all of that. It is us putting our trust in God. We talked a lot about that yesterday in, in, in his, this trust that we have to put in him. But it is God that has all knowledge of what we are doing. And so we remain faithful to him. We remain steadfast in him. We continue to go to him in prayer. And he, in turn, will give us this just amazing way of showing his faithfulness to us. Just as we are faithful to him. His plan isn't, though, without ups and downs by any means. But through it all... He will show how much better he is at arranging our lives. Because sometimes our lives take us in one direction or another. You know, I find it, it interesting. There are some things in my life that I can easily give to God. And there are other times where, we, where I just struggle with saying, God, what is your plan? Um... A lot of times that has to do with my children. I will be honest with you. I have uh, a hard time just simply saying, God, I trust you. Here are, here are the issues that I have. You know, there's just something so hard about um, trusting God with my own kids. And I, I don't know why that is. Um, and, and I know some of you probably feel the same way. I make a lot of suggestions to God, really, on their behalf, I think. Um, and sometimes it's like that for me in church. I, I know that God put me here and God puts us all here, but sometimes I just have a hard time saying, okay, God, what is your plan for this? Sometimes we just need to let go and give it to God. And that's really what I think this verse is telling us, is that I will exalt you, I will praise your name, for you have done wondrous things, plans 
formed of old, faithful, and sure. It's really saying that your plan is the plan. And so we need to find ourselves sometimes just letting go and letting God. You know, uh, there's another verse uh, from Proverbs, which was the book we were in, that talks about how um, you, I think it says something similar to you make many plans, but it's the Lord's prevail or, or his purpose um, to what our life is. And so take that with you as, as we start moving about in this world, as we come back together in church, we all have an idea of what that should be like. But sometimes we just need to let God be ever present in us and have him take that and do as he sees fit. Uh, because it is ultimately his plan that will prevail. So that's my thought for the day. Um, I know sometimes those thoughts resonate with you, and other times we just see each other face to face. Um, there is nothing hard and fast to what I talk about. I don't have it all spelled out. I spend a lot of time just reading the word and seeing what comes to me and what I feel God wants me to say to you um, or how he's moved me or something that's changed my life and hoping that touches you as well. So thank you for listening to my scripture, my message, and now I invite you, would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the plans that you have for our life. Even though sometimes, God, we don't understand them or we struggle with giving things to you, may we learn to let go and let you take over. Father God, you are ever present with us in these days. And as we move into a time where we come back together in your house of worship, may you be here. May you continue to keep us safe and healthy. May we always do what is right in your eyes. As we come to worship together, may we feel your presence through the Holy Spirit. May we know that your son was raised for us. God, we continue to pray for those that are suffering in body or mind or spirit. We ask that you continue to be with them and walk alongside them, heal them as only you can. Father God, we still are in the midst of this pandemic. And while things might start to move around, we need you to be ever present with those that are still facing this, that still have uncertainties, not just here, God, but everywhere, in our nation, in our world. We know that it doesn't just go away, and some of us are still scared. Some of us still have anxiety. Father God, I pray that you just be with them, those people that are feeling that, and may they feel a calm inside them to know that you are ever present. God, we, we rejoice in knowing that we are the church together, that we are your children, and that through you and with you, we will be able to do more than we ever thought possible. Father God, I continue to lift up the leaders of our country, that they continue to do what's best for the people and that they do it through your guidance. And God, I want, I want to reach out to those that may not may not know your son or the 
the power of the gospel. May they feel your presence. May they turn their life to Christ and accept your son and the sacrifice that he made for them. And God, in all this, may we find time to just sit and listen to you, to the world around us. May we find a moment to be silent, pure silence, to hear what is around us and what moves us and what we feel. And God, we continue to lift it all to you. And even those things that are on our hearts that we don't know what to say, reach out and hear them and answer them in your way, on your time. All this we bring to you through your son who was raised from the dead, who is alive in us and who taught us these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I invite you on Sunday uh, as we gather for worship uh, solely online. Uh, we will celebrate Mother's Day as well as uh, the fifth Sunday of Easter. So I invite you, we'll come to you from Ottawa at 11 o'clock. And then on the 17th, as a reminder, we go back to our normal worship schedule. Uh, we will, um, for now and into the future, we will broadcast both uh, Ottawa and Sundal uh, live on Sundays. Um, so those of you that typically worship at Ottawa, you'll be able to join us for that service as well as Sundal. Um, so you... And you can listen to both of them. You, you get, uh, get uh, my message twice. Sometimes it varies, depends on uh, where God leads me as well. So you are invited as always to be a part of our ministry. Thank you for being a part of this daily ministry that we have. Um, if it is something that you feel so moved by, um, there are ways to support our ministry, and I invite you to go to our Facebook page and look at those, um, and we'll talk more about uh, what online ministry is going to look like in the future um, uh, coming up. So thank you. I hope that you can reach out to somebody today and just let them know that you are there. As always, I am here for you. Feel free to reach out, telephone or text message or Facebook message or email. Whatever the case may be, you can even knock on my door and I will answer if I'm home. So, may God continue to bless you. May he continue to wrap his arms around you. And you and I will see each other tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.